Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what we're going to be covering is the items uh, which is basically uh, been merged with the food item and we'll be covering the different settings and stuff in this particular element. Now I've already had time to play around with the food and see how it all works and stuff like that. Some of the triggers have been renamed. I'll cover basically what is different about it but it's pretty similar in the most part so uh, the first thing that you want to do is import your texture for your food item and this is going to be a item texture and this can be either for your item or your food item it doesn't matter which one but you will need an item texture for the uh, actual d display of the actual item and you want to go to your uh, plus your mod elements tab and then click on the plus icon and then scroll down where it says item and then you're going to give your name item a registry name now we've covered this in the past but I will again uh, basically what your registry name is is basically the ID for what the I basically the item it will be under your namespace so if you're uh, for example, the namespace for this particular workspace is called element, so it would be element and then colon and then your item registry name. So if we call it like something like food, it would be element underscore, or pardon me, colon, and then OB um, uh, food for the actual registry. So again, we'll just uh, quickly create something like this. I will just call it food, Whoop. foods and then we will click OK and then we want to give our actual display texture so we would set the display texture that we have and you can import a 3d model here if you want to uh, there are a couple different built-in ones there's the normal one and then there's a tool one you can choose either one or if you've imported a JSON file for from Blockbench or something like that. You can also see it in this list, but we haven't done that. Uh, special information is basically the lore text. It's uh, the text under the item name, so it's basically anything that um, gives help or anything, any details. You can put whatever you want in here. Um, color codes work, so you can use the uh, selection sign, I believe it's called. So we can use character map selection sign and then we would basically go and put the color code in so nine is actually light blue so we can set that and then we would basically tech put the text in here so something like that and then it would basically display that underneath the items display name now uh, the glowing effect is basically similar to how food works or enchanted food or um, enchanted books the little pink glow that goes over it if you want to enable that you can check that there's also a condition for when it does glow uh, you can click on that and then you can basically make a condition uh, for the system so if you wanted to make a specific condition again remember to use the logic tags or return blocks so you would need to set a return and then you would need to set return true. Of course, it, it helps if I have the right one. I'll go back to there and then grab this one right here and then it should connect up. And then you would basically set your condition and then you would have your return true when it, it the condition is met. And then you would basically return false if the condition doesn't meet its standards. So for example, if we wanted to test if it was a day or something like that, uh, we could go under world management and then we could basically test if the is day in provided world and then this would basically go okay is this is it day in provided world return true it will glow if not if it's night then it will basically return false and won't glow so that's basically how the conditions work um pretty simple stuff so that's that part uh properties so let's move on to that so in the properties tab what we have is in game name so this is basically the display name for the actual item when you're looking at the item itself uh, rarity again we've covered this with the food item um, I believe in the item as well basically what this does is it basically just changes the color of the display name of the item uh, there are 
like four different options here. Common, I think, is white, and then the other two are basically colored ones. I'm not sure what colors they are, but uh, there are a few options there. Uh, creative inventory tab. This is basically the tab that uh, the item will basically go under. So if you want food, you might want to put it under food. If not, then you might want to put it under miscellaneous. If it's a tool or something, then there's already a specific tool element for that. Uh, this is not really designed for tools, but you can use it for tools still. Uh, the stack size. So this is how much the item can stack up to. Uh, for things like eggs, I believe it, this number is 16. Uh, you could basically set the maximum stack size to 16, but things like six sticks are uh, 64. So uh, depending on what you're basically creating your... Um, your item for you might want to adjust that uh, also tools only stack up to one so you might want to consider um, depending on what kind of item you're basically making that you make basically set the number for the stack size uh, things that shouldn't stack should be things that use durability things like that uh, you might want to consider again if you need to set it to a stack size one or whatever the enchantability, this is basically how uh, well the enchantability actually, like when you enchant the item, it actually um, has effect on it. Uh, the default for this value is set to zero. I'm not too familiar with this, uh, but uh, there is some data in this list that shows you the default enchantability um, values for things like wooden tools, stone tools, Iron tools, I believe gold tools are pretty good, uh, 22. So yeah, uh, uh, that's basically that. Um, not too familiar why you would actually really want to put anything on it because it's an item, but it's there if you want it. Uh, the uh, item dis uh, destroy speed. So basically this is the how fast the item actually destroys the blocks and stuff like that. So if you read the help, it basically lists another table data. Uh, one is the default for normal items, 1.5 for swords, and then there is um, greater than 2 for harvesting tools. So basically things like um, sword or shovels, things like that, is 2 or greater. Um, this basically... Again, like it says, uh, destroy speed parameter controls how fast this item destroys the blocks. So if you want to use it for tools and stuff like that, you would set this number to whatever one of those values. 1.5 is sword, and then any number higher than that is two or more. So uh, take that in consideration. Uh, we have uh, damage versus mob slash entity. So this is basically, if you want to enable this, you would check that little box there. And basically what this will do is it will um, allow you to damage the entity like a melee item, a uh, thing like a sword or something like that. Um, I'm not sure if the values are, yeah, the values aren't in here per se. You might be able to find them on Minecraft Wiki. I'm not, I haven't checked the actual item page it might be outdated or something we'll quickly take a look at that uh let's see here enchantability durability damage versus mob so yeah it doesn't actually say um where uh the how much damage it actually deals uh, so you might need to look up uh th this particular item on minecraft wiki usually they have a uh damage uh count on how much damage it actually can deal for a specific tool i know swords deal a lot and axes are better than um actual swords so but they're also slower so you might want to look that up um they should be on the actual relative tool page so if you type in axes then the data should be under that page on wiki i've found it in the past to be under those pages so it should be the same um, outside of that we have the item use count durability leaves zero to disable uh, damage so basically if you want to make this a tool that actually does damage uh, basically the durability of the tool so um, 
each time that you use a sword on an entity, it basically deals a damage to the item. Uh, if you break a block or something like that, it also deals a da damage to it. So uh, this basically is the overall count of how much durability the actual um, item has. Now, if you want to disable it, uh, so it will not like take any damage at all, it can be constantly used. Set this value to zero. Otherwise, you want to have it above zero. So one would only have one use uh, if you wanted it higher than that. Uh, all the actual durabilities for the items in the game can be found in the little help menu. Uh, there's gold, everything in here. So the um, number here in the table is basically how many uses that that particular item. So crossbow has 326 uses. So you would set that number to 326, but you can also use custom numbers if you want to. Uh, immune is item immune to fire. So this has um, been added in with the nether update. So basically some things like netherite will actually be immune to fire and it will just kind of like float, I guess. I haven't played around with it too much, but um, basically it will not burn in lava, fire, things like that. Uh, you can basically check that box if you want that can't destroy any block basically this allows you to break any particular block um, even bedrock so uh, if you want to do that then you can check that box uh, does item stay in the crafting grid or craft uh, when does does item stay in crafting grid when cr crafted so basically uh, this is kind of a specific thing it also has recipe reminder and stuff like that. Uh, we'll cover that in just a second. But what it basically does is um, when you actually craft an item, it will stay in the crafting grid rather than uh, basically when you pull it out of the crafting item slot, it will still be in the item slot itself. So you can check that box if you want to keep it as like a constant um, renewable resource kind of thing. Uh, you can even add damage, I think, to it for each time it's crafted. You can deal damage to that particular item. Uh, that would be done through procedures, though, and I'm not too familiar how it's all set up, but yeah, that's basically what it does. It will stay in the crafting grid part of the thing, and then you'll also get an item from it still, so if you want to enable that, you can, can do that. Uh, damage instead uh, damage item instead on crafting table. So this again is um, basically like that mechanics that I've basically just said. I think you can do it through procedures as well. So each time the item is crafted, you can basically damage it, but you can also uh, check this box. Uh, it does say that it uh, makes sure to stay in crafting grid and that the amit and that item is damageable. So you'll need to actually set the damage value up here for the durability. And you'll also need to make sure that this other box is checked in order to use this one here. So outside of that, uh, recipe reminder, uh, again, you'll need to make sure this one is enabled to use that. And then basically you would select the um, block item mechanics uh, that you basically want for the reminder. I'm not sure how that one actually works. I haven't had time to play with it. Uh, it says here that um, the primer controls the item that will replace the will be replaced when using the crafting table. Uh, this means that the item will be part of the recipe but will be replaced with another item. So I guess what will happen is if it's, um, say if you have a water bucket and then you want to basically um, use water, like for example, uh, then what you could do is you could basically test for that particular item, uh, the, the, the item that you're using. It might be a wooden bucket or something that of water. Then you could basically replace this with the empty wooden bucket, and that would probably work just as well. Uh, it will just kind of replace the item rather than deal damage. So you could either use the damage or you could basically replace it, I guess. Uh, the item animation. So this is basically uh, when the item is used. There's different 
animations for the thing. There's one called none. So if you don't want an animation when you're actually using it, you can set it to that. Uh, there's drink, crossbow, bow, block, eat, and sphere, or spear, pardon me. A sphere. <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, if you don't want one, if it's just like for a regular item, you might want to just set this to none. And item use dur duration. So this is actually important for when you're making up food. Um, now, if you're not using it for any particular other settings up here, then you might want to set the item use duration. Uh, this will probably be important if you're making a item like uh, a drink or a thing you might also want to set the animation uh, for food you would want to do eat and if you want to do something similar to a drink or something like that then you might want to set drink for the animation for the uh, item animation uh, basically if you don't want to use food uh, then you will you can just leave this number uh, to zero but if you want to basically have a a food item then you're going to have to set this number to something higher now as far as i can tell uh this is in ticks and it will basically keep the item being used for the duration that you set so if i set it to 10 it'll be half of a second uh for eating the food so if i wanted it something longer like two seconds for basically eating the food then I would set this number to something like 40 and that'll be two seconds to actually eat it. I'll explain that more when we get to the triggers part. All right, so let's move on to food properties. So food properties, if it's an item or like a food type, then like if you're setting it for a drink or a food, then what you want to do is you want to enable that the checkbox is item food and then you want to set your nutrients value. Uh, this is basically how much the um, food will give for your hearts and stuff like that, or saturation is how long it will actually last. I'm not sure the saturation levels uh, for regular food. Um, as far as I can tell, it's um, probably not listed. Uh, food properties, advanced properties. Uh, yeah, this page definitely needs to be updated for sure. Um, yeah, as far as I know, um, the default value is probably set to the same, but saturation basically is, um, steak, uh, has really high saturation levels, uh, so it would probably be like a higher number than that. I'm not sure what the number is in general. Uh, there definitely needs to be some work done on that wiki page for sure. Uh, nutrient value is basically the amount of hunger bars that you actually increase. So each one of these is a half a heart. So one would be only half a heart or like half a food. Uh, two would be a full food and the four would be two full foods. So you can kind of adjust that however you want. The eating results. So things like... Um, soup bowls and stuff like that you could give back the bowl itself so if you wanted to give back a bowl then you could basically after it's eaten you could kind of drag this all the way over and then you could find the bowl itself um milk buckets also uh give back the items so if you wanted to make like a honey bucket then you could basically give back the bucket itself so they can reuse the item for creating another honey bucket i guess and um is the food meat so basically if it, if this is checked uh, you will be able to feed it to wolves and heal them with it if not then it will just basically not be able to be interacted with wolves itself uh, is always edible uh, so basically what this one is is if you always want to eat the item regardless of your if you have no hunger or not then you can basically check this and they'll basically allow you to uh, constantly eat the item regardless if you are hungry or not uh, things like water bottles you can do that with so uh, you can do that with that uh, moving on to advanced properties so this actually has to do with the a couple things um, custom dispense behavior so these far as I can consider is probably condition uh, conditional things so dispense successfully if and then you would basically test your condition and then you basically return true so this is definitely a condition type 
and the other one is on dispense attempt result. Uh, this one might be actual uh, procedure. I'm not sure if it's a um, uh, new procedure. It doesn't say if it has to return true or not. I don't think it has to return true. You probably just basically make an event that it basically does something. So shrink provided item, etc. So I don't know uh, what you want to do with that, but you can play around with that. I haven't really played around with the dispense mechanics too much, but I know that this one will basically, uh, you can test for if true or not. The other side over here is the inventory. So what you can basically do is set an inventory for the item. Um, again, you will need to select bind the inventory to the thing. Now by default, there isn't any inventories made. If you've made an inventory already, then it will be in this dropdown list but uh, we haven't actually made any in this workspace. Uh, the stack size of inventory is basically the slot count. So it's important to um, make sure that you remember how many slots are in your inventory because it will have run into issues when you actually open up the inventory. It'll actually crash or you'll have some issues with that. Same thing with blocks. Now, if you're slots it says zero one two three four five now if it says five like i just said then you want to go with your gui plus one so it would actually be six slots because zero because it starts at zero right so again if we had the inventory slots go from zero to five this would be six so that's how that basically works if you want to disable it you can just set zero inventory um as long as it doesn't have an inventory, if it's like a GUI screen or something like that without slots, and you can leave this as zero. Um, maximum stack size. This doesn't have to be zero. I actually think the minimum one is one, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so the minimum one, minimal value for this is one. Uh, maximum is 64. Uh, basically, it's just a matter of how many items can actually stack in the, uh, the slots of the inventory. So you can set that how you want. Uh, moving on to triggers. So we have a few different triggers in here. Uh, a lot of them are from the the default ones for the, both food and the uh, regular items. So when right clicked on, uh, when right clicked, and then it says entity position. So basically, what you can do is when you right click on an entity, you can basically run uh, a procedure from this trigger. Uh, when right clicked on a block, uh, block position. So when you right click on a block, then you can basically uh, run the procedure here. Now, I think this one might also be if you just right click on, um, just right click, I'm not sure. It might be equivalent to error. Um, it might run it at the location where you're right clicking instead. I'm not sure. Uh, it doesn't say it supports source entity, so it might not be for if you right-click on a actual entity. It might be just if you right-click on error or whatever, and then the position where it's actually right-clicking will be on the your location rather where the right-click event is. Uh, for that, you would probably need to use something like ray tracing to actually test where your cursor is actually pointing, but um, I've covered that in a separate video. Uh, when item is crafted slash smelted. So if you want to basically make a different um, thing like a trigger when you craft or smelt the item, then you want to basically set that. Uh, this can be also done through global procedures as well, as well as these other ones here. Um, when living entity is hit with the item. So if you're working with a, a weapon or a tool or something like that, you can basically damage the item or something like that through procedures if you want. Uh, when item is in inventory tick, so every tick in the inventory, so every one uh, twentieth of a second, um, it will basically run a particular trigger. Uh, when item in hand tick, so when the only when the item is in the hand one twentieth of a second, um, it will basically run this procedure. Uh, when player stopped using item, so basically if the player is holding down the mouse button to use the item. When they release that, this procedure will basically run. Uh, when entity swings the item, so basically if they're uh, attacking something, then 
you can basically run uh, an event from this particular trigger uh, when item is dropped by the player. So very similar to how the um, advancement for passing the item to another entity, uh, like a zombie or whatever, you can basically detect if the player throws the item and you could give like an advancement or something like that if you wanted to. Um, it's open to whatever, but basically the trigger would be uh, if the item is actually dropped by the player. And then the last one here is um, for food. I actually created a little example workspace that I'll demonstrate in just a second. But uh, player finishes using item. So again, if we go back to the properties, uh, this is the duration that you'll need for basically the food. So when this part runs out, um, then what you're going to do is you set up a procedure and then you could give some type of effect uh, when they finish eating the item um, or consuming the item. And uh, I've demonstrated that with um, a little food item that I've made. Basically, all I'm doing here is basically giving the player speed uh, for 15 seconds, which is 300 ticks. So we'll demonstrate that in just in the world just a second. Again, the properties uh, for that I've set for uh, 21 second um, or 20 ticks for the actual duration to eat the item. And the trigger is set up right here for the when player finish eases, finishes eating it basically using the item. So we'll demonstrate that in just a second. Uh, let me just hop in game. All right, so we're in game. I have the food item in my inventory. I'm in survival, so I can demonstrate this. But uh, as you can see, we're running right now, and this is how fast it basically takes us to get to this particular birch tree. So we just reached the birch tree. Let's try that again. And with this time, we'll eat the food. Um, think I don't actually have a hunger bar so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the game mode um, or difficulty to something a little bit harder so we can actually get our food duration down and I'll just take a little damage uh, probably not down there just go up here we'll jump off a tree okay we actually have some uh, food so we can just eat that all right, so let's get into position again, and we'll eat the food. And then you can see that we run relatively faster after we eat the food, so we can get all the way to the tree quite fast. So that's basically what it's doing. It's adding the speed effect to our actual inventory, or our player, when we after we eat the food. And uh, we can get a little bit of a boost there. So um, outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.